The only way these women are going to go on the record is if they all jump together. Why is sexual harassment so pervasive and so hard to address? Let's interrogate the whole system. Hi, my name is Jody Cantor. I'm an investigative reporter for The New York Times. What have you got? I was told that the wrongdoing in Hollywood is overwhelming. I don't want to be quoted, period. Understood. In your previous stories, how did you persuade women to tell you what had happened to them? A case I made was, I can't change what happened to you in the past, but together we may be able to help protect other people. The truth, basically. What is it exactly that we're looking at here? These young women walked into what they all had reason to believe were business meetings. I can still see it, the hotel room, the floor plan. He kept trying to touch me. I asked him to leave me alone. Instead, they say he met them with threats and sexual demands. I was young, scared. Hi. We're from the New York Times. I believe you used to work for Harvey Weinstein. People have tried to write this story before. He kills it every time. Harvey adamantly denies any allegation of assault. He played people. He was a master manipulator. Will you give me just one chance to talk to you? Are you sure that this isn't just young women who want to sleep with a movie producer to try to get ahead? This is bigger than Weinstein. This is about the system protecting abusers. The women who receive these settlements, they can't speak out. They'll be sued if they do. But if someone could speak freely about the payouts... What payouts, John? You have to imagine that every call you make is being recorded and you're being followed. Can you imagine how many Harveys there are out there? You want to get me killed. Do you wish you hadn't signed up for this story? Do you? No. The only way these women are going to go on the record is if they all jump together. We're all here, Harvey. Who have you talked to? I have three daughters, and I don't want them to ever accept abuse or bullying. I'll go on the record. Go right. It's time to write. This is all going to come up. I was silenced. I want my voice back. This movie is not about the Me Too movement, and it's not about what happened after. It's about how this story was built. Could we talk for a minute? I've been waiting for this for 25 years. It's interesting to tell a part of history that hasn't been told, and it was a wonderful way of honoring what they did. Will you give me just one chance to talk? This is not just a true story. This is a story which had an impact on the world. We knew it all, but what we did not know is who are Megan and Jody, and what did it take for them to get to the point to push the button and publish it? It's about how these two women, these two working mothers, found a way to create an airtight story that they could publish in the New York Times that would affect that kind of change. Hi. Hi. We're from the New York Times. I believe you used to work for Harvey Weinstein. You have to imagine that every call you make is being recorded and you're being followed. The greatest fear I had was fear of failure. Was Weinstein a scary figure? Absolutely. To sources, to the women he victimized? Of course. As we continued to report, the stakes just felt higher and higher and higher, that if we were not able to publish this story, this predator would be able to go on and hurt more women. It was like he took my voice that day, just when I was about to start finding it. That was something that was terrifying to us and also extremely motivating. The only way these women are going to go on the record is if they all jump together. I think that the individual transformation that a lot of us has had as a result of this reporting has allowed women's consciousness to transform, and that affects finding voice and being able to stand up for oneself. There's such integrity at the heart of what they do, and seeing actually what lengths real journalists go to. The core of this movie is the encounter, the collision between something so intimate and something so vital to be talked about. This is all going to come out, Lanny publicly. We're not activists, we're journalists, but we believe revealing the truth and putting certain problems on the table, we can begin solving them even if it's very messy.
I think it's a really uplifting movie. It's really inspiring to see the huge difference that a relatively small number of brave people can make when they decide to step forward and speak the truth. It's incredible. Truth matters. I'll do it. I'll go on the record. It's a film full of women being courageous, and I don't think there's that many examples of that on screen. Do you wish you hadn't signed up for this story? Do you? No. Here is a film of countless examples of female heroism. That's something really to be celebrated. I hope women come to see this film and feel themselves represented and feel that speaking up when something happens could be something that is supported and could make a change. We're not there yet, but as long as we keep going on this path, the change is possible. This is bigger than Weinstein. This is about the system protecting abusers. I was silenced. I want my voice back. It's been 24 years. It's been 30 years. It's been almost 15 years. It's been 30 years since Harvey Weinstein sexually assaulted me. My name is Jody Cantor. My name is Megan Tui. I'm an investigative reporter for the New York Times. You have to imagine that every call you make is being recorded and you're being followed. I was one of the women that went on the record in the article that came out. Sometimes it feels like it just happened yesterday. At other times, it feels like lifetimes ago. I was a very different person in 1998. I was young, scared. I had started my own theater company. I was way ahead of the game. And then I was assaulted by Harvey, and it really disrupted my career. I pulled back. It's not something I dwelt on until I got a phone call from a Weinstein ex-employee asking me if I'd spoken to any journalists. And a week later, I got a phone call from Jodie Cantor, and I was ready to tell her everything. It was like he took my voice that day, just when I was about to start finding it. She'll go down in the history books as the first, and to watch her take back her voice was really inspiring. You can use anything I've said. I'll go on the record. He did this to all these women, and I felt sad for myself that that young girl had taken the blame for it. It was only after I spoke out that I realized that every story is important. When I read that New York Times piece, I had this sinking feeling in my stomach knowing that this horrible thing had happened to so many other people, but I also felt a sense of hope that there were others out there like me. We're all here, Harvey. Who? have you talked to? Nothing was as powerful as our brave sources and the truth. And look at the impact. There was a positioning of my story among the Asian community that was very different from the stories that were already out there, that had felt that there was no voice that spoke for them. The outcome changed the lives of women everywhere. And while we know we still have a long way to go, there's no turning back now. In terms of this story, things have only just begun. Only when this information is public and people can react to it, they can be in dialogue with it, our ending is everybody else's beginning. And we had spent so much time trying to unearth these hidden stories of abuse and harassment. And then to see the dam break and to see all these other stories bursting into public view, it was so satisfying. Finally, the truth was out. Bye.